we have a talk on multi-language pipelines. Uh, this is Cham from Google, a software engineer, also Apache Beam committer and PMC. Uh, I think that's uh, about all you need to know from him, and he's going to tell us a lot of good thoughts. Thanks, Cham. Uh, my name is Chami Karajailat. I go by Cham. Um, I'm a software engineer at Google, uh, and a committer and a PMC member for Apache Beam since uh, its beginning, like 2015. So I'll be talking about multi-language pipelines, which is a unique feature offered by Beam that will make your software engineering team more efficient. So let's start with a little bit of background. So Apache Beam provides you a number of SDKs. Right? Uh, SDKs uh, offer you a number of things. So primarily, it gives you the APIs for developing your data processing pipelines. Beam also gives you, Beam SDKs also give you a number of transforms. These include, for example, sources and sinks available in Beam. And the SDKs are also responsible for taking your data processing pipeline and converting into a format that is un understood by Beam runners. Beam provides three main SDKs, Java, Python, and Go. We also have a support for a number of DSLs, like Shio, YAML, and TBT. Beam also supports a number of runners. Uh, one of the tasks runners do is optimizing the execution of Beam pipeline. So when you submit the pipeline to the runner, it may optimize it in certain ways. And it's also responsible at the end for executing your Beam pipeline. Uh, and also, runners will manage your pipeline, and it'll, it might give you some management features. Like you might, for example, have, get a UI to view your uh, you know, job, and you might see metrics, stuff like that. There are different runners in Beam with different execution modes. Uh, Beam provides local runners. These are commonly known as direct runners that would run in a single VM. Also, Beam provides a number of uh, distributed runners like Flink, Spark, and Samza. Uh, and Beam also supports Dataflow, which is a distributed runner that you know, runs your pipeline in a fully managed way within uh, Google Cloud. All right. So since the beginning of Beam, over like la last eight years, we've added you know, many SDKs and, and many runners, right? So we have Java, Python, Go. We might add, add more, and we might get up to you know, S X number of SDKs. Similarly, we are adding runners. So we have Dataflow, Flink, Spark. We might end up adding up to Y SDKs. Now, if you look at how this would work, so for data, if you take Dataflow, so for Dataflow to work, It'll, it'll have to have a runner, a version of the runner that supports the Java SDK that can execute Java stuff, right? And we'll also have to have a Dataflow runner that can support Python stuff. Let's call this Dataflow Python runner. And we'll have to have a version of Dataflow runner that supports Go pipelines. Let's call it Dat Dataflow Go runner, right? So similarly for Flink, we'll need a Java version, Python version, and a Go version. If we have SDK X, right? We'll have to go and update these runners to support SDKX and come up with versions of these runners to support this new SDK. And if we keep adding runners, when you come to runner Y, we'll have to have a version of, you know, Java version of that, Python, Go, up to X. So you can see how this whole ecosystem can get quite complicated with this number of runners and SDKs that we have to support. So to simplify this whole thing, a number of years back, we came up with something called Beam Portability Framework. The whole idea was to take this you know, quadratic ecosystem, x times y ecosystem, and convert it into a linear ecosystem in the, number, in the order of number of runners. Right. So with the portability framework, for Dataflow, you just need one Dataflow portable runner. This can support Java, Python, Go, and it's guaranteed to support any future SDKX. For Flink, Similarly, you just need one Flink portable runner. It can support Java, Python, Go. It's guaranteed to support future, future SDKs. When we add, in the future, when we add runner Y, you know, we can add it in such a way that it supports all available SDKs 
and also guarantee that any future SDK will be supported on this front end, right? So we only have to maintain linear number of combinations. It simplifies our whole ecosystem. So let's talk a little bit about how the portability framework works. Uh, I'll, I want to talk about two aspects, the job submission and the job execution. So when it comes to job submission, you would start with you know, your favorite SDK. You will define your pipeline using this SDK. And the SDK will take the pipeline and will convert it to a SDK and runner ag agnostic definition cause, cause using something called the uh, Beam Runner API. This is a standard API available in Beam. And the end result will be a proto-based standard pipeline definition that's agnostic of the runner or the SDK. Right? And after that, you can submit it to a portable runner. For example, if, if you're using Dataflow, you'll be using Dataflow Runner v2, or you can use Portable Spark or Portable Flink. Right? And for submission, also using, you'll be using a special standard service called the job service which will be used to submit your job to the runner. So before going further, I want to explain this concept of Beam environments. So Beam uses environments to execute Beam UDFs. These are things like do finds, do funds, combine funds, etc. And the, uh, the runner can choose which set of environments they support but they are well defined in the Beam Runner API proto. So we predefine what are the types of environments available in Beam, but the runner is free to choose a subset of these and say, okay, these are the types of environments I support. An example environment could be a Docker container. So that would be the Docker environment type, and that will contain your SDK. Or it can be a native process that can execute uh, user code. Right? So with that, let's look at the... Uh, job execution part of the uh, portability framework. So as I mentioned, you'll use the SDK to convert your pipeline using the runner API to a standard format, and you would submit it to the uh, runner. And once the runner gets this pipeline, it'll usually do some optimizations. For example, it might take some of your steps and build few steps to optimize execution within machines, right? And then the runner would go ahead and deduct a set of bundles, SDK bundles, from your pipeline. And each bundle will consist of some of your data and some of your computations. And this data might, could either be like some of your initial input data, or it could be some intermediate data that's generated while executing the pipeline. Steps will be like some set of steps that you defined uh, within your pipeline. And once the runner you know, defines these environments, what it will do is, it'll, you know, in its workers, it will go ahead and start up these Beam environments. And it will st start executing these bundles in the environments it starts up. So usually, Beam runners you know, don't just use one machine. They, they are distributed systems, so they'll use a bunch of machines. So this is what will happen in each machine. So commonly, you'll have like some common runner component that's responsible for like orchestrating the whole execution that will send parts of work to these workers. And within each worker, you will have a component of the runner running. Right? And also within each worker, you will start up these environments. Now, once some work comes to a worker, that worker can figure out the set of bundles needed to execute that part of work. And it will use the SDK environment to execute these bundles. So from the runner to the environment, you might send things like you know, the bundle definition and the set of data to be used for the bundle. And from, back, from the environment back to the runner, you will send things like you know, data, the you know, results of your computation, logs, metrics, et cetera. So this is how the execution will happen in a distributed way across a bunch of VMs. All right. So we came up with, with this nice you know, portability framework to simplify our ecosystem. Now, along the way, we also had several key insights. So we had two, two basic insights. So one insight was that this SDK agnostic pipeline definition doesn't necessarily have to refer to one environment type. It can, the same pipeline definition can refer to different environment types within it. right? 
Also, during pipeline execution, by the way, we use a, a standard API called the Fun API for pipeline execution again within Beam. Uh, so during pipeline execution, uh, we again, you know, don't have to just start up one, uh, you know, environment within workers. We can start up multiple environment types, right, within the same worker. Now, the deduction we came from these uh, insights was that a Beam Portable Runner is capable of executing pipelines with transforms from multiple SDKs by using different environment types. And these pipelines that use multiple SDKs for definition and execution are called multi-language pipelines. All right, so let's look at how our, what I described earlier extends to uh, multi-language pipelines. So when you define a pipeline, you know, typically you have a primary SDK uh, that you use to define your pipeline. In this example, it would be the Python SDK, right? But this SDK will also use other SDKs to define the complete pipeline. And main SDK, you know, is responsible for computing the, you know, figuring out the larger pipeline. This other SDK will be responsible for figuring out part of the pipeline. For example, if here I'm talking about using the Java SDK, so that'll figure out part, some part of the pipeline that actually needs Java, while, you know, the, uh, the main SDK figure out the rest of the pipeline as well as Python stuff, right? And then the main SDK is responsible for putting everything together and coming up with the larger pipeline definition and also for submitting it to the runner after the beam run, you know, with the run API conversion. Okay, so let's dig a little bit deeper into this so, to see how it works. So in the, uh, my left, you have the Python SDK, that is our main SDK. And on the right, we have the Java SDK. So we use a specific uh, utility offered by the Java SDK. This is called an expansion service. So we'll be using the Beam Java SDK expansion service here. And also for communication with the expansion service, we use another standard API uh, offered by Beam. This is called the Beam expansion API. Uh, that is what the you know, our Python SDK would use to communicate with this Java expansion service. Right? So the Python SDK would send a request to the expansion service. So you want to use now a Java transform from the expansion service within your you know, larger pipeline. So what you would send to this Java SDK are the transform configurations that are needed to construct this transform, right? Think of this as the same set of construction parameters that you pass in if you constructed this transform object in the Java side. But now you want to send them from Python to Java through this protocol. Now, once the Java expansion service receive uh, this set of configurations, it can go ahead and construct your transform object, and then it'll expand it. So expand is a term in Beam, which means that you will take your composite complex transform object and convert it to a bunch of primitive transforms that are understood by Beam runners. So that also has to be done in the Java side. Java SDK expansion service will do that and come up with the you know, fully expanded definition of your Java transform. And after that, it'll you know, send this response back to the Python SDK, and the response will contain your fully defined Java portable transform that is ready to be included in your larger pipeline, right? So once the Python SDK get the response, it can go ahead and, you know, you know deduct, figure out the complete pipeline, and it'll submit it to the uh, runner through the, you know, to the run API. Now let's talk about how this will work in a worker, right? So this is the job execution part. Now, similar to the case I mentioned earlier, the runner would be sending work to each worker. Now, once a worker, the runner component within the worker gets the work to execute, it'll again go ahead and figure out the set of bundles. Now we figure out these bundles in a way so that each bundle will only need one environment, right? So, the runner will have a bunch of bundles to execute, and it'll also start up multiple environments. So it'll start up a Python SDK environment as well as a Java SDK environment within each worker. Now, 
the runner will have a bunch of bundles. Some of these bundles will be for Python, other bundles will be for Java. So all it has to do is make sure that it sends the correct bundles to the correct environment for execution. Right? So Python bundles will be executed by the Python SDK environment, while the Java bundles will be executed by the Java SDK environment. So this is how the execution will work, and the runner will orchestrate the full execution of this bundle and the larger pipeline. All right, so I, I hope that gave you a brief idea of how multi-language pipelines work. So let's look at the uh, major benefits of, of this framework. I think there are two broader categories of benefits. There's reduced cost of software development, and there's also the reduced maintenance overheads when it comes to you know, maintaining your software over long term. So when it comes to reduced cost of development, now, the main thing here is that you, know, you can just develop your complex transforms once and offer it to all BIM SDKs. So we, we used to have these you know, things like IO connectors are pretty complex transforms. Right? So we had, for example, for BigQuery, we have two different implementations, and both of them are complex. And there were cases where you know, we find bugs, sometimes critical bugs, like data loss issues in one language. We fix that. And then two years down the line, we find the same bug in the other implementation, right? So having multiple implementations of the same complex thing is always very error prone. So you can prevent that and just maintain one core implementation and offer that to all SDKs. This is especially important for things like IO connectors, again, which are like, more, like the most, some of the most complex transforms we have in Beam. So we can just develop these connectors for one SDK and offer it to other SDKs. And if you have like a you know, large development team that use different languages, right? say you have like a Python sub team and a Java sub team. So it used to be that you know, they had to have their, run their own separate pipelines. So Python team would develop Python transforms and run Python pipelines. Java team would do Java transforms and do Java pipelines. But with this framework, you can share code more easily. So you could have like a you know, Python team that just focus on their functionality and develop a transform around it. And they can just share that transform with the Java team, and they can just use that from their Java pipeline and, and vice versa. Right? So you can share your team code more easily. And also, when we introduce new SDKs to Beam, or you know, if you want to define your own SDK, you can do that with like very easily. You don't have to go and add new IO connectors or other core transforms. So you can just use available transforms. All you have to do is like the core part of the SDK that bind everything together, and you're good to go. So you have a new SDK. So it's a lot less effort to introduce new SDKs. Well, so let's talk about reduced maintenance overheads. So as I mentioned, there are you know, no more complex implementations, no more multiple implementations for complex transforms. So you, know, you just have one core implementation, you offer that to everybody. You know, if you fix something, you fix in that, that core thing. And also this means that you, know, you don't have to maintain multiple versions. Right? So think about how many SDKs we have. We have three, we may add more. So we have four, three, four, five versions of the same complex thing, it's so hard to maintain. So now we have just one thing, and that's the one we'll maintain and make sure it's correct. Right? Also, you know, if you have an evolving development team, you can evolve that more easily. So think like you have like initially a Python team, you just do Python stuff and you develop a bunch of complex things, transforms using Python. And over time, you want to convert this to a more Java team. You want to do more Java stuff, right? Now, without this, you'd have to go and re-implement everything again in Java. But with this, you can, you know, you can convert your team to Java, but you can keep reusing your Python transforms through, you know, in your future Java pipelines. Also, if you want to use you know, transforms developed by, by third parties, you can now you know, have more flexibility, right? So you don't have to think about the implementation language of the transform you're, or the SDK you're using, right? You can just take, you know, we have like a bigger pool to choose from, and you can use those transforms in your, your uh, pipelines. Also, this gives a more uniform user experience when using different SDKs. So again, going back to like things like BigQuery IO, right? So for the longest time, we had two implementations of BigQuery for Java and Python. But Java one was much more featureish than Python. Python had a very basic implementation, even though you know, we have both. One has many more features than the others, because we just don't have time to keep, you know, this had, we had more things here. We don't have time to add more things here, right? 
But with this, you just have one core thing that has all the features you need. So you just have to make sure that these features are available to all SDKs, and that's it, right? So you can give a much more uniform experience to all users of all your SDKs. All right. So overall, Apache V multi-language pipelines framework can make your you know, software development and maintenance efforts much more efficient, and in the long run, save you a significant amount when it comes to you know, software development costs as well as software maintenance costs. All right, uh, so with that, let's look at some example pipelines and, and see, you know, what, look at the APIs and run, try some demos to you know, try them out. So I'll, I'll mainly talk about two pipelines. So I have, the first one is a word count but this is like a special word count where you know this is a python word count that uses the already available count transform in the java side right so it's a word count using count the count per element is a java transform in beam we are just going to use that from python and the uh, second transform is you know uh, it's a java pipeline but we are going to use the run inference transform available in beam python so i'm pretty sure you're familiar with this already we talked about this in the keynote, so we'll try to use the run inference transform in a Java pipeline. All right. So first one, using Java from Python. Right? So we start by defining uh, several small Java objects to make this transform available to uh, the Python side. So we had uh, three small objects. One config called configuration, second one called builder, the third one called the registrar. Right. So let's look at each of these. So the configuration is you know, just a simple Java Pojo, a Java object. And this basically had to have the construction configurations as properties of your Pojo. So these are the construction configurations you need to construct your transform. So the, uh, in this case, the count by element doesn't ne need any configuration. So it's just an empty, empty object, right? nothing else. And then you need to define a builder. And here you just have to implement this uh, a special interface called the external transform builder available in Beam, which has one method, build external. And as a parameter, this build external method uh, takes the, an object of your uh, you know, configuration object that I just defined in the previous slide. So it's the Java count configuration here. And it should return a constructed uh, version of your transform, and my transform here is called Java count, which wraps the uh, count per element transform, by the way. So you can see that you know, if, I, if I had extra parameters in this construction, I can use them in my constructor here, right? So, but I don't have any parameters, so I, not, I don't have anything. So the third uh, class you want to add is called registrar. Uh, this, again, has to. Uh, you know, implement a special interface called the external transform registrar that's available in Beam, which again has only one method called non builder instances. This has to return a map from a unique URN to your, an instance of your builder. So you have to go ahead and define a unique URN. So I just defined one here called Beam transform org, you know, Apache Beam Java account v1. That's my URN. And I have to return a map from that to an instance of the builder I just defined in the previous slide, right? OK, so once you do that, your transform will be available to the Python side. And now we have to go ahead and use this from Python. Right? So to use it from Python, we have, a, again, an interface. This is called uh, external transform. This is available in Beam Python SDK. So to this, you have to provide two main things. You have to give the URN that you just defined that uniquely identifies your transform. And you have to give a payload. The payload will give the set of construction configurations that will be you know, needed for the, for the uh, configuration object. Optionally, you can give a third thing. So if you have your own expansion service running, you can use that service, and you can pass the URN of that service here as well. All right, so let's try to run it. OK, so I have a script here just to run it. Let me show you what's in the script. So Java from Python. We are going to use Beam's uh, direct runner here uh, to run this locally. OK. Um, so I start by you know, deleting my previous uh, output. 
and then I start my expansion service here, right? So I need a Java expansion service. I use it using this command, java.java, java-ja, beam example multi language, which contains my transform. This is a standard example available in beam, so you know it's already released in that Java. And I have to give a port, 5001. And then here I'm just waiting a little bit for it to start. And after that, I run my pipeline. And this is my Python pipeline, which is defined in javacount.py. And I give the runner, the environment type. I want to start up Docker containers here. And my input and my output. And the expansion service, I just give the port I just started here. right? So just run it. All right, so it started a second tab just for the expansion service. All right, so it started the expansion service. So this gives you the set of transforms available in the expansion service. And on top, you see the count transform, right? So this is what we made available. It's available in the expansion service. And I can use it from my pipeline. Now it's not in the pipeline. OK, so you can see things like, you know, yeah, start to run it. And you see that it's starting up environments. All right, so you see that it's starting up Docker environments using Docker containers. All right, so it, it just finished. And I can use this to see my output. All right, there's your you know, word count output. It's a word count, but the special thing is you know, use the Java count from a Python pipeline. Right. So let's go back to the slides. All right, now, as you saw, you know, we had to do the extra, few extra things just to use the Java transform from Python. And we wanted to make this even simpler. All right, so we came up with several utilities and tools to make this even simpler for you. One thing we came up with is called wrappers. So we define uh, wrappers in the uh, pipeline language to hide this base API and give you a much more nicer API. Right? So for example, if you look at the Kafka.py available in Beam Python, you will see that it has two transforms, a Kafka read transform and Kafka write transform, and give appropriate parameters. Right? That's all you need to know. Underneath, it uses this base API I just mentioned. And it'll also start up the expansion service for you. So it'll automatically start up the expansion service. It'll use the correct URN, use that, get the response, shut it down, and you know, attach it to your pipeline. So you don't have to, with the wrappers, you don't have to know anything. You just have to use Kafka read, Kafka write, that's all. Also, uh, now, I also mentioned that you have to define several classes to make your Java transform available to Python and other languages. We also wanted to make this simpler, simpler so that you don't have to define these. We came up with, with two ways to do this. So if your Java transform is created using the standard builder pattern available in Beam, so we have a way we define transforms in Beam. It's a version of builder pattern where you know, we define a builder method with parameters, you know, as well as a, a you know, constructor to construct, then we configure it using builder methods. So you can, such transforms can be directly invoked from Python without adding any, any Java code, right? So you can just say builder method, so construction, builder method, builder parameters, et cetera, and gi just give the name of the transform Java class, that's it. And also, if your transform is a beam schema aware transform, this is another way to, uh, standard way to define transforms in beam. Uh, using a Beam schema-based configuration. So if your transform is defined that way, again, you can directly use that from the multi-language pipelines framework without any extra Java code. Now, if you're interested in that part, which, is, which we highly encourage you to go that way, we have a separate talk today in the evening by Ahmad just on using schema-aware transforms from multi-language. So please attend that to learn more about that part. All right. So let's look at the flip side here. Now we want to use Python from Java, right? So for this, we offer an API in Java called the Python external transform. And this takes one uh, primary parameter, uh, which is called name here. 
So name should be the fully qualified name of your Python transform. So it should be module plus the class name of your Python transform. Or it can just be a callable. So it just has to be something that returns your transform object. So it can either be the you know, full qualified transform uh, module and the path, or it can be a callable that returns an instance of uh, your transform object. Either is fine. And this can be used uh, you know, to use your Python transforms from Java sets. So you will say Python transform dot from name, give your transform name. And if you want, you can give additional things, right? So if your uh, callable or the constructor needs args or keyword arguments in Python side, you can specify them through Java here as with keyword args and with args. And also if your transform needs extra Python packages, this could be either PyPy packages or they could be like just local packages available in Beam. You can just give them directly through Java API here. You can say, in this, this takes a map, so you can give a bunch of dependencies that you need in the Python side. And nice thing is once you use, you specify those packages, they'll be available both to expansion as well as to runtime. So you just have to specify it once here. You give a new package, it'll be available during expansion as well as execution for the workers. All right. So let's look at how you would use the run inference from Java side. Uh, so here, you know, this is you. There's a callable for using this transform. It's called Apache Beam ML inference run inference dot from callable. So that's what we are going to use this in this example. And we we need a couple of extra packages here. We need the uh, scikit-learn package as well as pandas. So we give them here. We give output coder. This is the order of the output type that this transform generates. And uh, you know, you'll again learn this in the <laughs> keynote, so I don't have to explain this more. For the run inference, you need a model handler uh, that you can directly pass here. So we, I'm using the standard model handler available in Beam Python SDK for uh, called sklearn model handler numpy. So that's why I use here. And also, you need your model, right? So you give the uh, URI of your model. Uh, again, as a parameter. All right, so let's run that as well. Let me shut this down. So now this is uh, Python from Java direct. Okay, so, all right. So this is my script. In the top, again, I start a different tab. But this time, what I start is the job service. So this is the same job service I mentioned in my talk. You need this to submit jobs to the um, runner. I, I did not need this in the Python pipeline because what I'm using here for the Java pipeline is the Python version of Direct Runner, right? So it's kind of confusing, but we have Java pipeline using Python transforms run using a Python portable runner implementation, right? So I need the job service for this. I started this up. But I don't have to specify expansion service here because this uh, Java API uh, would automatically start up expansion service for you. So it'll start up a Python expansion service, and it'll use that, and it'll shut it down. Right? And this is my uh, execution. I use Maven to execute my Java pipeline. And portable runner is, would be you know, my runner type. So let's run that. All right, so this is my job service. It's running here. It's running. Now, here I am just waiting for it to start. Yes. So, you, yeah, you'll see here. So I didn't start manually start up expansion service, right? So I'm running a Java pipeline. Now here you can see, you know, there's some Python code here. This is starting up my Python expansion service. And it'll install my packages in it. And I think once you run it once, it'll cache it as well. So it'll use, now it's using the cache version here. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, if we want to run this in, in a data flow uh, environment, can, do we still need to, <clears throat> to deploy this service, or is it handled automatically? Expansion service? Yeah. No, it'll start it up for you. OK, yeah. thank you. OK, I think my network is just too slow to start up the expansion service. So it was waiting for the expansion service to start here. I'll try it once, but you know, again, this is a standard. Let me click. Let 
Let me try it once more, but you know, I'll give you the link to run it yourself. It's a standard uh, thing. All right, anyway, so let me go back to the slide. Uh, I'll also give you a link to try it yourself. Okay. Um, now, similar to you know Java, uh, similar to Python, we also give some simplifications for you to uh, you know you simplify your your Java, simplify the process of using Python stuff from Java, right? So the key thing we provide here is is wrappers. Uh, so some of the key transforms available in Beam, like run inference. Uh, can uh, we have wrappers for them in Java so that they can easily be used, right? Uh, and these are usu usually more concise and more convenient than trying to use the base Python API. Uh, so for example, for run inference, there's already a class in Java called run inference.java. Uh, so you can, this is using this is simpler than trying to you know use the base API for run inference. So for example here you know it's it's called, you can say run inference dot off, and you can just pass it the model handler. You don't need to give a callable for example, and just use that. And also you don't have to give things like extra packages, right? So it'll look at the model handler and it'll figure out the packages it needs and it'll you know install these uh, extra packages for you automatically. And then you just, you know, you have to give the model URI as well. But using this, it's simpler than using the base API and, you know, configuring everything, everything yourself. All right, so I have a third demo again. All right, that might not also work, but we can try that. So this one, uh, you know, in this case, I'm going to use, you know, again, I'm going to use run inference in this example, but it'll be using the wrapper transform, and I'll be using a pipeline using uh, the data flow runner, and this will run on a slightly larger output, uh, slightly larger input. Uh, so this application is a standard uh, example available in Beam called, uh, you know, SQLearn uh, NIST classification. What this does is, you know, you have this NIST database, which has a bunch of handwritten versions of numbers, right? So you take this data set and try to figure out the actual numbers available in these handwritten images by going through a model that we defined already, right? And this will run on Dataflow, and, you know, it'll be, uh, It'll run in a larger input, and the output will be stored in GCS. Let's try to run this. All right, so let me run. I'll let it run, and I'll go to my presentation, and we'll come back and see if it finished. Right? As I said, I'll give you the link to try all of these yourself. They are standard. All of these are standard examples. So it will be. And it should just work. All right. So I spoke about Java support and you know Python support. Uh, we also have good support for Go SDK if you are a fan of you know, running Go pipelines. Uh, today, Go has support for using Java transforms and using Python transforms. So key transforms like you know, the BigQuery storage write API transform, as well as Java Kafka transforms, are already available to Go SDK through the multi-language pipelines framework. Uh, also, this run inference transform I just mentioned, again, is available to Go SDK through the multi-language pipelines framework. Uh, so in the future, we are, we are actually working on adding a new runner implementation uh, to Go called Go Prism Runner. This will be a, a, you know, a version of the direct runner, a portable runner that you can run in a single VM. But this will fully support multi-language for all SDKs. So this will be a good place to actually test out your multi-language pipelines locally before running them things like, you know, in, on things like uh, Dataflow. Uh, so again, there's a separate talk on this tomorrow. If you're interested in the Prism runner and to see how it will work, where it is, please attend that talk. Uh, in the future, we also hope to implement a, version of the Go expansion service uh, just to make you know, 
key go transforms available to Java and Python and other SDKs. Right? This is not available yet, but we hope to add that in the future as well. Right, uh, let's see what happened to my demo. Okay. I won't wait for this, but you know, again, as I promised, I'll give you the, all the links. Uh, so, you know, we have two main quick starts. We have a Python multi-language quick start and a Java multi-language quick start guide. Uh, these give you like, you know, detailed instructions for running a simple pipeline uh, for Java and Python. So first one would be, you know, using a Java transform from Python side. Second one would be using a Python transform from Java side. Go through these quick starts and, you know, try them out. And we also have a more detailed programming guide. Uh, which gives, goes a little bit more in de you know, detail into how multi-language pipelines work, right? And for the examples, go to, just go to this link uh, in GitHub. Uh, so it has you know, the documentation you need, like all the you know, Maven commands you need to run, for example. So you can just try them out. This is, you know, uh, and on top you will find the Java, here you find Java and also you know Python example series. So this is the Java account, and we have the Skillan one. You can try them both, uh, and uh, they should work. And you know, give your feedback to the Beam community. All right. Thank you very much. Any questions?